When people talk about the benefits of inositol, it's often in the context of managing polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS. And while it's true that inositol can be helpful for PCOS, there are significant limitations. So what exactly can inositol do for you? Let's explore its most common benefits, not just for PCOS, but for overall health, and get a clear picture of what you can realistically expect from taking it. Inositol, a naturally occurring sugar alcohol, can be found in foods like cereals, corn, meat, citrus fruits, and legumes. Once thought to be part of the essential B vitamin complex, we now know that your body can produce inositol on its own, making it a non-essential nutrient. Research shows that inositol can offer significant benefits for women with PCOS, particularly when it comes to managing blood sugar levels. In fact, some studies suggest it's just as effective as metformin for this purpose. However, metformin still tends to outperform inositol for other symptoms, like promoting weight loss and regulating menstrual cycles. Inositol doesn't stop at blood sugar control. It also supports healthier lipid levels, helping to lower total cholesterol and triglycerides. Additionally, it can improve hormonal imbalances by increasing estrogen and progesterone while reducing testosterone levels. There's even some evidence it might slightly reduce BMI in women with PCOS, although this area of research is less conclusive. One of the more beneficial uses of inositol is its potential to boost fertility, particularly for women undergoing reproductive treatments like IVF. Studies show that combining myo-inositol with clomiphene citrate enhances ovarian activity, while a mix of inositol and N-acetylcysteine has been linked to improved ovulation rates. Interestingly, pairing two different forms of inositol together, myo-inositol and d inositol appear to be especially effective at improving pregnancy rates. It also seems to improve live birth rates during IVF. However, it's important to keep your expectations in check when it comes to inositol. While it's proven to help with metabolic issues like blood sugar and cholesterol, as well as improving fertility, its effects on other PCOS symptoms like weight gain or excessive hair growth are less reliable. In fact, you're unlikely to shed much, if any, weight by taking it. If your main goal is to boost fertility and balance hormones to support conception, the combination of myo-inositol and d inositol seems to be your best bet. On the other hand, if you're focusing on general metabolic health, sticking with the form myo-inositol alone is effective and likely good enough. We'll talk more about these different forms of inositol later in the video. Inositol also shows strong potential for tackling metabolic syndrome, a cluster of health issues that include high blood pressure, elevated blood sugar, excess belly fat, and high cholesterol levels. Together, these factors increase the risk of more serious conditions like heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Research in postmenopausal adults with metabolic syndrome found that taking myo-inositol for a year improved fat levels, lowered blood pressure, and enhanced insulin sensitivity. Clinical studies consistently highlight its positive effects on blood pressure, especially when taken for at least 8 weeks at doses of 4 grams or more per day. There's even evidence it can help lower the risk of pregnancy-induced hypertension. Overall, inositol is a useful tool for managing metabolic syndrome and reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. However, there are some caveats. While it's effective at improving metabolic issues, it again hasn't reliably demonstrated benefits for weight loss. Additionally, most of these benefits are observed in people at risk of developing heart disease, stroke, or diabetes, not in those who already have the conditions, like in type 2 diabetics. Inositol has also been studied for its role in managing blood sugar during pregnancy, specifically in cases of gestational diabetes. Most research suggests that taking myo-inositol can significantly reduce the risk of developing gestational diabetes and lower the need for insulin treatment in high-risk patients. Interestingly, myo-inositol seems to outperform d inositol for this specific purpose. These benefits do help reduce the risk of premature births, though it doesn't appear to affect birth weight. 
However, when it comes to other forms of diabetes, like type 2 diabetes, the evidence is much weaker. One small study found that adding inositol to standard diabetes medication slightly lowered blood sugar levels, but the effect was small. In short, when we talk about diabetes, inositol shows strong promise for gestational diabetes, but the research doesn't really support its use for managing type 2 diabetes. Inositol has been explored as a potential treatment for mood disorders like anxiety and depression. However, inositol does not seem to be beneficial for these issues. A meta-analysis of clinical trials found that inositol doesn't reduce anxiety symptoms in patients with various anxiety disorders. And although there was a small trend toward improving depression, the magnitude was insignificant. Any slight improvement in depression is likely minimal and fades quickly after stopping its use. For individuals already using a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI, a common depression medication, adding inositol doesn't offer additional benefits. As for insomnia, the research on inositol is limited and primarily focuses on pregnant women. Studies suggest that taking myo-inositol with folic acid slightly improves sleep quality compared to folic acid alone, though the effect was small. Now let's talk about the different forms of inositol and how they work. While inositol exists in nine different forms, the two most useful in the body are myo-inositol and d inositol with myo-inositol being the most commonly studied. In the human body, inositol is naturally present at a ratio of about 40 to 1 myo-inositol to d inositol Because myo-inositol is so much more abundant in the body, most research on inositol has focused on using just that form. However, research in women with PCOS shows that using this 40 to 1 ratio of both forms is particularly effective for boosting hormone levels like progesterone, estrogen, and sex hormone binding globulin with just 3 months of supplementation. Improvements in these key hormones are thought to be a major reason why it supports fertility so effectively. So what's the takeaway here? If you're using inositol to manage PCOS, especially to boost fertility, the 40 to 1 ratio is your best bet. But if you're taking inositol for other reasons, like addressing metabolic issues, there's no need to stick to this ratio. In those cases, plain old myo-inositol works just fine on its own. That said, inositol has its limits. It's unlikely to lead to weight loss on its own, doesn't seem to help with mood disorders like anxiety or depression, and may only slightly improve sleep quality, primarily in pregnant individuals. To see real benefits, you'll need to take at least 2,000 mg daily, with 4,000 mg being the sweet spot recommended by most studies. This means you'll probably need a dedicated inositol supplement, as combination products often don't pack enough inositol to make a difference. PCOS is a complex condition, and the right supplement for you depends on your specific symptoms. While inositol is one of the most popular choices, it's far from the only one. Curious about what else can help? Check out our video on the top 10 supplements for PCOS and discover what might work best for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you use inositol and what are your experiences? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date and share this video with someone you know who use the info.